This is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. And in this video, we'll write a program in Mojo that uses the Llama 3.1 language model to generate a summary of as much of the book as possible. But is the code going to be a monstrosity? We'll also compare the Mojo implementation to an equivalent Python implementation. TLDR, I think this is a language that we should all really keep an eye on, and we'll get into why. Now, I don't always talk about monstrosities on this channel, but I do talk a lot about Rust, language models, and programming languages. So if that's something you're interested in, subscribe button's down there. We would love to have you. Now, the company that created Mojo is called Modular, and they have almost enough investor funding to send a rocket to the International Space Station. Now, Modular was founded by Chris Latner, and Chris has a really impressive track record. He's been interviewed by Lex Friedman, he's worked on Apple's Swift language, and he's also worked on Google TensorFlow. And Modular has really created magic. They literally released a tool called Magic. We'll get to that too. To get a good sense of where Mojo and its ecosystem are at, like I said, we're gonna be building this simple Mojo program that takes the URL as input, downloads the contents of the page, and uses a language model to generate a summary of that page. Sounds straightforward, right? After building this thing, I have some thoughts on Mojo, both in the near term and the long term, and there is some tremendous opportunity here, but not in the way that you might think. Now, this video is not sponsored by Modular. Maybe they just have me under their spell. But it is sponsored by Mem.ai, and this is a very deliberate choice. You'll see why in a minute. Now, Mojo has come a long way in the past year or so. If you're a Rust or Python developer, you're gonna be interested in this. If you're not a Rust or Python developer, you're definitely gonna be interested in this. Mojo aims to have the performance and safety of Rust or C, but syntactically, it aims to be as Python compatible as possible. If you're a Python hater, just, just bear with me for a minute. Just the primary market for Mojo, at least at the moment, is machine learning engineers. And these are folks who are living, eating, and breathing matrix multiplications. And if they wanna sound sophisticated, they might call them tensors. But Mojo does declare itself to be a general purpose language. And there is already an open source Mojo project called Lightbug that in the future aims to give developers a Next.js-like experience. That's pretty interesting. I did make a video about Mojo pretty soon after it was released. And at the time, you really couldn't do a whole lot with it. I'd, I'd love to make another video on Mojo once a few more of these things are implemented. Very impressed with what I've seen so far. I can't imagine building anything quite yet with it, but it had this vision that was pretty hard to ignore. At ModCon 2023, I was there by the way, thank you Modular for having me. Modular announced this AI framework called Max. And Max is written entirely in Mojo, but it has Python bindings, so you can actually use it from Python projects as well. Why did they do this? Well, if you watched a recent video of mine, I showed a graph of a subset of the current landscape of machine learning libraries. And you can see it's very fragmented. We have these Python machine learning libraries used for language model inference, for example, like transformers. And those call another library, in some cases, Torch, which is written in C. And then Torch will call some GPU specific code, which is written in CUDA, right? Which is like C with some extensions added to it. This is very fragmented. And the idea behind Max is to encompass all of this, write one framework, in one language, and it just makes everything much easier to manage. We will be using the Max framework in the Mojo version of the program that we're going to be writing. Okay, so that's kind of an overview of Mojo and Max. At this point, you're like, show me the code, right? Okay, again, this is a URL summarizer. First, let's look at the Python version. We'll snake our way around the code. Uh, this is gonna be pretty straightforward. First of all, if the user does not specify a URL, we exit immediately. If they did, we compute a hash of the URL and check for a file called page content with the hash appended to it. This is essentially just a caching mechanism. So if we make a request to the same URL more than once, we're not loading from the URL every time. We check to see if the file exists on disk already. If it does, we load the content from the file. Pretty straightforward. I was using Project Gutenberg to download Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. And at one point I was pretty confident I was going to get banned from the site. So I implemented this caching mechanism. Then we specify a hugging face model string. In this case, it's llama 3.2 1 billion in struct. I did use 3.2 for the Python version. I just wanted to kick the tires on it. I am using 3.1 for the Mojo version. Then we create a hugging face transformers pipeline to do the inference. And then we set up a list of messages. And this is a really a testament to how nice the hugging face transformers API is because there is a lot going under the hood here that is abstracted away from us. And I think every large language model API should aspire to have something like this. You don't necessarily want this in every situation, but it is a very common use case. And then finally, we actually perform the inference by passing the messages to the pipeline. After all is said and done, we get the output of the inference. Love or hate Python, you can't really deny that this code is pretty concise and straightforward. And I think that's in large part due to 
Hugging Face making a great high-level API for the Transformers library. Before we look at the Mojo version, first of all, what is this magic thing that Modular just released? Well, it's a package manager and it's a little bit like Cargo in the Rust ecosystem. It has a pedigree that I won't dive too deeply into, but it's kind of a fork of another package manager called Pixie, which is open source. To create a project with magic, we can do magic init page underscore summarize. That's the name of our project. And then dash dash format mojo project. Once we're in the project directory, we can add dependencies using magic add and then the dependency name. Note that by default, magic assumes the dependency you're trying to add is available in the conda repository. If you're not familiar with Python, don't worry too much about what that means, but you can also install packages that are in the PyPy repository by adding a dash dash PyPy flag to the add command. And that allows you to pull in packages that you would use pip to install in the Python ecosystem. TLDR, Max makes it really easy to add Python dependencies to your project as well as Mojo dependencies. Then to run your project, you can just do magic run Mojo and the name of the file with the main function. Now, ChatGPT is not going to be able to help you with magic or even much of the Mojo language because they are so new and new features are constantly being released. And this is an area where large language models struggle the most. This is why I've created a bunch of mems about Mojo and magic. This, for example, is a mem about magic and the commands that I think I'll need most frequently. I'm gonna show you how mem.ai can actually help me convert this Python code to Mojo just based on what I've written in these mems. We'll get to that in a second. Okay, so again, I was pretty happy with the Python version of this program. Now let's take a look at the Mojo version. I got it working, but it's a little more verbose. And originally I set out to do the entire thing in pure Mojo, no Python dependencies whatsoever, but I kind of failed at that. Most of it is Mojo. I did wind up using the Python request library to actually make the HTTP request. Mojo does have that library I mentioned earlier called Lightbug that allows you to make HTTP requests as well. But at the time I'm making this video, it does not support HTTPS, so I had to find out another way. But everything else is written in pure Mojo, including the file IO, the language model inference, and so on. So back to mem.ai, I was creating these mems about Mojo in hopes that it would help with translating Python to Mojo. Let's see if mem.ai chat can help with that. I'm taking this get file name from URL function from the Python version, and I'm going to ask mem.ai how to translate it to Mojo. So this is the mem.ai dashboard, and I can just paste in my prompt here into the chat, convert the following Python function to Mojo, and enter. We'll see what it gives us. Okay, it got a lot of things right. It nailed the way to import Python dependencies. So from Python, import Python. That's how you access this Python module to call import module function. Did that perfectly. So this is not 100% correct. You can see at the bottom here, it's trying to call this run function. That's not going to work in Mojo because it does not support function calls at the root level of a file, but it gets us 90% of the way there. So this is super handy and ChatGPT will not be able to do this. And this is not just useful for Mojo, right? This technique can be applied to any new language or framework that is not in the training data of the frontier language models. Really handy feature of mem.ai. And I feel like this capability is not as appreciated right now as it should be. And mem.ai is a really good option for implementing this strategy. If you do wanna check out mem, I'll put a link in the description below so you can try it out for yourself. Just for kicks, I'm gonna try this in ChatGPT and see what it gives me. Yeah, this is completely wrong, right? We don't have the hashlib functionality in Mojo by default. That is specific to Python, so it's something we have to import. Basically just echoed back the Python function. I asked it to write it in Mojo. Oh no, it did do one thing. It used the fn keyword instead of def, which is unique to Python. So it did do that. It changed something, but the, the rest of it's completely wrong. Mojo does not support string formatting like this. This is a perfect example of why this mem.ai chat interface that pulls data from your mems is so handy to have. Okay, let's look at the Mojo version. The basic idea is the same. See if there's already a file with the contents we're looking for. If not, use the request library to grab the content and then save it to the file. These calls to open and write are actually native Mojo calls. They're not using Python at all. The API for file IO in Mojo looks very, very similar to the way it does in Python. We have that get file name from URL function that uses Python hashlib to make a hash of the URL. That's another place I use a Python dependency actually. But things get a little crazier when it comes to actually doing the language model inference. Now, I could have just brought in the Python transformers library, but I kind of thought that would be a cop out because that kind of defeats the purpose of using Mojo. I was really determined to see how the Max framework works, but the Max framework does not have a simple API like Transformers does, unfortunately. When I was making this video, I was hoping someone had built a high level library on top of Max that gives us a nice, simple API like Transformers. But at the time, 
it seems like nobody has done this yet, at least on the Mojo side. So long story short, Modular does provide a Llama 3 example, so I heavily leveraged that, right? I copy and pasted all of the code from the example into my project and adapted it for what I was trying to do. They had this Llama 3 inference service struct that seemed like a good entry point, but it was intended to be used with an HTTP server, so I modified it a bit to suit my purposes, and then off I went. The init function takes a config and a system prompt, and it does inference using a conversation similar to what we did in the Python version, but it requires quite a bit more code. We're actually manually inserting all the special tokens required, something that the transformers library would do for you, but it works. There it is, a summary of a portion of Frankenstein. So here are my thoughts on all this. Obviously the Mojo version was more verbose and more difficult to write, but that's not because of the Mojo language and it's not because of the Max framework either. It's because we have two open source libraries in the Python ecosystem that we don't have in the Mojo world. The first is the request library, like I said. So we just pulled in the Python version of the request library. The second is that in Mojo land, we have Max, but we don't have a simple API like Hugging Face Transformers. The Max framework is a low level framework and it's concerned about tensors and tensor pipelines. It's a lot lower level than we might wanna work with, right? To my knowledge at the time of this video, there is no language model framework with an API like that of the Hugging Face Transformers library. Now, would that be easy to make? It seems like something without all the bells and whistles wouldn't be too bad, but I don't really know. In a lot of ways, I think Mojo might be one of the greatest open source opportunities that we have right now. The ecosystem is still really new, so there's a lot of foundational libraries that need to be built by someone, right? And when we're talking about bleeding edge languages, typically you'd be hesitant to invest time into making one of these because you'd be worried about the language failing or people losing interest and so on. But Mojo is already a great language and the modular has a ton of investor backing. So while nothing's guaranteed, the language technically could still fail, right? But the chances of it failing are a lot lower than something without all that funding. So because there's so much room for these foundational libraries, I think this combination of factors creates a really interesting opportunity for someone looking to get into open source. Thank you again to mem.ai for sponsoring the video. I'll put a link in the description to the code for both of these programs if you want to check them out. Please let me know if I've made any mistakes or if there's a more optimal way to do any of the things that I was trying to do. I'd love to hear about that in the comments or elsewhere. If you like this video, definitely check out this video about Colossum, which is my favorite Rust crate for interacting with large language models. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.